Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. My name is Charles, and we're still coming to you from the hallowed halls of My Kitchen University. Now, this past week, I have had the great pleasure of being in some disagreements with a couple of folks. Pleasure in being in a disagreement? Oh, yes. Well, not in the fact that we were involved in a disagreement, but rather in how we dealt with it. A very different thing. Well, let me explain. And this explanation does involve me looking at these disagreements through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which, you know, is a following of Jesus involving a relationship with him, studentship from him, and living life for him based on everything we've learned. See, this is how this relates. My view, my taking pleasure from this, came from remembering that we are to be in a relationship with each other through our relationship with Jesus. And as I thought about that, I was then able to engage my studentship to learn more about my position and theirs. You know, to learn about insights they have to help determine their position, to learn concerns they had that helped form their views, all things very important to know. So, where to begin this particular conversation? Ah, oh, yes, of course. Mm. That was the place to begin. Okay, so if our life is to be one of studentship, shouldn't we be open to learning? I mean, it seems a little obvious when stated that way, right? But I'm afraid that this is not always the case. I have seen way too many times things that should be enriching discussions, you know, between differing points of view, breaking down and becoming heated arguments instead. And such arguments always shut down the learning process and prevent healthy growth in relationships. Now, one thing I had better do before going any further is to define what I mean by the word argument. I want to make sure we're all on the same page and understand what I'm talking about. See, when I'm using the word argument in this talk, I'm actually talking about arguing, you know, where listening and thoughtful consideration of the other side disappears into thin air as you become only concerned with proving your point to the other person or at the very least, forcing them to accept your point of view as being the true valid one. When we do this, we become all defensive. Anger rises, voices get raised, names start to be called. And this has nothing whatsoever to do with presenting our case, but with stringent repetition of the same points without ever considering the questions asked by the other side for clarification. Nor is there consideration if the other view has any validity whatsoever. Now this is very, very, very different from presenting a case in favor of our point of view, one that tends to show that it, our point is valid, which is known as making an argument for our position. Making an argument is very different from what I'm calling arguing and what I'm referring to as uh, arguments with another person. Okay, so with this definition out of the way, what exactly did I find so enjoyable in these disagreements? Well, first, can I just say they returned the favor. I mean, they disagreed with me as well. It wasn't a one-sided deal. No surprise in that, right? Second, all of these disagreements, in all of them, the discussions were kept at the level of a conversation. We each stated what we thought and why we thought it. Then we each ask very thoughtful questions of the other for clarification. And then we each took time to give very thoughtful answers and to better explain ourselves 
in order to help the other person understand what our ideas actually were and what they were based upon. And you know what is interesting about all that? The more we did this, the more we found that we actually agreed on many things and that our disagreements, while being true disagreements, they were not as glaring as they first seemed. Respect for each other was maintained. And, at least speaking for myself, friendships have started to form. The basis of them are now there. Now, of all the things I could talk about, why did I bring any of this up? Well, if we are to believe Jesus, we are family, talking about fellow Christians. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And as such, we are called to love each other as he has loved us. He wants us to be one, even as he and the Father are one. And this simply cannot happen if arguments break out, causing divisions among family members. And remember, I am referring to heated exchanges where emotions and hot words fly, but listening, respectfulness, and thoughtful interactions are glaringly absent. There is no love there. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but what if you know you are right and you know that they are indeed dead wrong? Well, there is an old proverb that goes something like this. Knowledge is very proud that it knows so much. Wisdom is humbled that it knows so little. See, Paul even says that we only know things in part. We don't have a full comprehension of everything. Now, in time, that partialness will go away, but for now... We only know in part. Now, this being so, shouldn't we seek to be a little more wise than knowledgeable? Shouldn't we be more humble because of the fact, in truth, we know very little? Now, this is not to say that we do not know some things, that we do not know them to be true or that we do not know other things to be false. Okay, we do know these things. But shouldn't we be more considerate of different ideas in the light of knowing that our understanding of that truth may be incomplete? You know, a partial understanding? You know, they say that iron sharpens iron. But how will we ever become sharp if we blunt the consideration of differing points of view? For it is as we consider the ideas of others that a couple of different things will happen. One, we may find the truth of the matter to be, that is, a more complete understanding of the matter, is actually to be found in the layering of these two different ideas together we may gain insights from and learn the concerns that helped form the views we are interacting with, right? Insights and concerns that we may very well need in order to, and and, and need to integrate, need to know and integrate into our understanding to make it the more complete one, a truer one. Second, our ideas may actually become strengthened as we think through what is said, you know, and find out that the basis for our ideas is the correct one and the basis for the other ones tend to be lacking or incorrect. A third thing that comes from this, and this can be a very radical idea, I know, I know, I know, but we may just find that we need to amend or entirely change our ideas, because these are the ones that are lacking, incomplete, not well-founded, 
and not quite as in line with Jesus as we first thought. Otherwise, a process known as growth. Now, this is all about using our studentship to learn about Jesus and how to live our lives based on Him. Indeed, I owe an insight into this from having worked through these disagreements. See, this comes from John chapter 7, verse 24. Here, Jesus is telling those who, through following their religious practices, right, were very angry with Jesus for healing a man on the Sabbath. They honestly thought Jesus was sinning by doing so. And Jesus said something pretty profound. He said, stop judging by appearances and see what is actually going on. To judge correctly that this is God working. See, I, I, I do think this is a lesson we need today. To use our studentship to go beyond the appearances of religious appropriateness and see what is actually being said. To honestly seek what God is saying over and above what we hold as knowledge. Yes, I, I know this can be very frightening. I mean, we don't want to get anything wrong. We don't want to step outside of God's will or his teaching, you know. So, once we accept something as true, yes, it can be very scary to challenge that, to question it. For in doing so, we are afraid of becoming heretical. We don't want to do this. And I understand this. I, I feel the same way. But Paul says something quite interesting. He says, we are to weigh everything carefully, to test everything and see what is good. Then hold on to that and to reject and abstain from what is evil. See, we need to consider to think, to ponder everything. Now, this means not to react in fear and reject any different idea carte blanche. You know, it's different. Don't know what? It's not good. It means to take it to God, ask for the wisdom which he freely gives, and ask the Holy Spirit to also guide us into the truth of the matter. Then, Trust God to give you the wisdom and the Holy Spirit to guide you. I mean, read the Bible, different passages. Read the passage, passages that are given in support of the different ideas. Use a study Bible, a concordance, or a site such as BibleHub.com to compare other passages that say similar things, you know, to look into things, to see if there are passages that say the exact opposite, that prove that the other point of view is wrong. Are they taking the passages out of context? Check it out and weigh it carefully. Don't simply accept or reject something at face value. Weigh it very carefully. Now, you may find after all that that you still disagree. And that's okay. But perhaps you will also see that it is not an intrinsically wrong view that you are disagreeing with. You just disagree. And maybe because you have engaged your mind, God can now show you other things unrelated to this topic that he has not been able to show you because, well, you were not fully engaged in learning. And you may just gain a friend by being respectful in your disagreement. And that is a source of true delight. Well, more could be said, but I think this is a very really good starting point for learning how to disagree, for learning how to enjoy a process of disagreement. Now, do yourself a favor. Don't start by asking, but what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, right? Simply ask God to help you to learn how to disagree with fellow Christians first, you know, your heavenly family, who differ in some points with you, but not major points. And trust that as you take these first few steps, God will lead you in answering your what-ifs. 
Don't let not having all the answers prevent you from making a start. Because some answers won't come, won't come rather, until you've taken your first few steps. Okay, well, until next time then, may you come to enjoy the benefits of the fine art of disagreeing. May you find friends along the way, and may you grow in your relationship with God as a result. And, well, take it easy. Take it slow, and make coffee into your cup. Always flow.